All right, very good. Okay, so guys, today we're gonna do um, patient positioning in the medical office, okay? Um, in order for our patient, actually, can you sit there, sweetheart? I'm so sorry, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, in order for our patients to be positioned correctly, it depends on what exam we wanna do for them, all right? There's a total of 11 positions that you need to know, and we're gonna start with sitting. So actually, if you wanna head over here, Michaela, that'd be perfect, thank you so much. Okay, so the sitting position. Um, obviously, we're gonna pretend your patient is in a drape, or I'm sorry, is in a gown, and I'm gonna go ahead and get the drape out and get that ready. In order for your patient to be in a sitting position, we're gonna pull out the footrest, go ahead and help them on up. Very good, and have a seat. And we're going to drape them. I hope that didn't touch the floor. If it did, pretend it didn't. Okay. Very good. All right, this is the sitting position. Easy enough, why do we use the sitting position? Um, we use it primarily because it is the start of the exam, okay? We do vital signs here. Um, we do medical histories in this position. Sitting position, the feet have to be down, the patient is sitting up, and the bed has to be flat. Easy enough, right? All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do what's called the horizontal recumbent position. That's where the patient is flat, okay? Another name for it is supine. When you think of horizon, you think the horizon kind of goes this way out in the sky, right? So in the horizontal recumbent position, the patient is flat on their back. Now, we don't ever, ever, ever lift a patient's legs. I'm sorry, we don't ever put a patient flat without first lifting their legs. You know that, you're gonna kill their back. So first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna, go ahead, Miss Dulis, oh, no, no, sit up for me. <laughs> I'm gonna lift her legs first, get her uh, positioned like that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and help her lay back. Awesome. And now I'm gonna take, her, take the drape and I'm gonna have the drape go all the way up, all the way down so she is completely covered. Are you comfortable? Mm -hmm. Awesome, very good. So this is horizontal recumbent. Why do we use this position? Um, anytime we need access to the patient's anterior part of their body, right? So let's say the doctor or the provider needed to do a breast exam. They needed to, to do an abdominal palpation. Uh, they're checking knees. It doesn't matter what the situation. If you need access to the front part of the patient's body, this is the position you would put them in. Um, let's say though that Julissa had really low back pain and we needed to go ahead and do something on her abdomen but she was complaining of low back pain, what could we do? We could put her in what's called the dorsal recumbent position. And literally all that is, is you're gonna bend your knees for me and put your uh, feet flat on the table, right there. Okay, go ahead, perfect. So as you see, her knees are bent, her feet are flat on the table. Again, we're gonna drape her. Technically, you can do vaginal exams and rectal exams in this position but we normally don't, okay? Normally this position is used because the patient is flat and because they have low back pain and we're trying to take pressure off of their back, all right? Um, speaking of vaginal exams though, we do have times when we do need to do a vaginal exam on a female patient and we have to put them in the lithotomy position. In order to get in the lithotomy position, you have to use the stirrups and I'm gonna show you how you do that. All right, I'm just gonna expose your feet, okay? All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take her feet and I'm gonna ask her to put them on the table like this, okay? Then I would take the foot rest or the leg rest, I'm gonna push that in and I'm gonna pull the stirrups out. Now, what's great about these stirrups is they can adjust, they can go in and out based on your patient's height, all right? So Julissa, you're probably what, about five, six? Five, five, somewhere like that. So this is probably a good range for her right here, all right? Now, she cannot see what's going on. She is flat, and also remember, clearly she is fully dressed and all of those sorts of things, but in a real patient situation, this patient is not. So we gotta think privacy and all of those sorts of things. Um, anyway, so she can't see what's going on, so I need to take her foot and put it in the stirrups. So I'm gonna go ahead and take your foot. I'm gonna put it right here for you, you feel that? All right, I'm gonna take this foot, you feel that? All right, now do me a favor, go ahead and slide your bottom all the way to the end of the table. Slide all the way down. And then I'm gonna take the drape and I'm gonna do what's called a diamond pattern, where I'm gonna take the point of the drape and I'm actually gonna put it down like this. 
so that she is completely and totally protected, all right? Couple things I need to tell you about the lithotomy position, but my patient's not comfortable, so I'm gonna get her out of it first. To get someone out of this position. All right, Jalissa, go ahead and scoot back for me. Nice job. I'm gonna take this foot and put it back on the table. I'm gonna take this foot, put it back on the table. Don't worry, your privacy is all protected. Now I'm gonna take your scrubs, put them away. And now I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it out. And go ahead and relax, relax. And now she's completely protected. Couple things with the lithotomy position that you have to remember. Number one, you don't ever put the patient in this position until the provider is in the room and ready to go, okay? What I mean by that is that if, even if the doctor's out in the hallway and they're like, okay, I'm ready, it does not matter. The doctor or the nurse practitioner needs to come in the room and they need to be ready to actively do the exam, then you put your patient in this position. The other thing is that we don't ever do this type of an examination alone. It doesn't matter if you're a female working on a female, specifically if you're a male working on a female, it does not matter. You always wanna have somebody in the room with you as a witness, because you don't ever wanna put yourself in the position where the patient maybe accuses you of something that you didn't do and you don't have a witness, right? We gotta make sure we have somebody in the room with us. Okay, that's lithotomy position. Now we're gonna do Sims. In the Sims position, which works out perfectly for you, that's her last name. Um, anyway, okay, in the Sims position, the Sims position, we're gonna first ask the patient to roll on their left side. But when you do that, guys, you gotta make sure that you're holding on to the drape because if she rolls over and I don't have this drape, she's gonna get all tangled up, all right? So Julissa, do me a favor, go ahead and lay on your left side for me. I've got your drape and don't worry, your privacy is completely protected. Good job. Now you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna take your left arm and you're gonna put it behind your back, okay? So shift your body where your left arm is down like that, perfect, and you can just relax. And then you're gonna take your right arm, put it up by your head, okay? And you're gonna take your right leg and bend your right leg up and your left leg is gonna be straight. Now, clearly she is completely covered, but if she were exposed, I would have full access to her rectal area. And this is the position we use for rectal exams, we use it for enemas, we also use it for something called a sigmoidoscopy. And sigmoidoscopy is when you're doing a scope just inside the colon, just right there in the sigmoid colon, okay? Sims position. Now we're gonna flip her into the prone position, which is gonna be on her stomach. Julissa, go ahead and flip over your stomach for me, please. And you can put your arms however you're comfortable. Nice job. Again, I'm holding on to the drape for her, making sure she's comfortable, making sure she's protected. Okay, this is the prone position. She's on her stomach. Why would we use the prone position? Um, anytime we have to gain access to the posterior aspect of the patient, right? So maybe this patient has something wrong with her back and we're checking it out, or maybe she has a mole on her leg we have to remove, it doesn't matter. Just if we have to gain access to the back of her, this is what we do, all right? Now, the next position is a little uncomfortable, so I'm gonna tell you about it, and then we'll pop her up in it, and we're gonna put her right back down. The next position is called knee chest, and it's exactly that. Julissa is gonna get up on her knees, but her chest is gonna stay down on the, on the table. It kind of looks like a yoga position, right? And the reason why we do this, the primary, primary reason that we do this is if the patient is pregnant and the umbilical cord is coming out before the baby, that is called a prolapsed cord. And what can happen is the cord actually can get pinched and in that situation, the baby is not getting any oxygen. So we flip the mom essentially upside down, which drops that baby down, okay? Technically, you can also do rectal exams in this position as well, but I've never seen one done in this position. We use the Sims position, all right? So Julissa, do me a favor, hop up on your knees for me, keep your chest on, on the table though, just get up on your knees, and then get right back down, okay? okay? All right, so she's gonna get up on her knees. Again, privacy is huge. Knee, chest, beautiful, hop back down for me. Awesome, <laughs> thank you so much. Just like the lithotomy position, you don't ever put your patient in this position until the doctor is in the room 
and ready to do the exam. All right, a couple more, we're almost done. Flip back over to the horizontal recumbent or go back on your back for me, please. Awesome. All right, awesome, good job. All right, now we're gonna do something called the Fowler's position, okay? And there's the high Fowler's where the patient is sitting all the way up at 90 degrees, and there's the semi Fowler's where the patient is at 45 degrees. Now, you don't ever lift your patient while their weight is on the table. You need to help them sit up first, and then you adjust the table. So I'm gonna go ahead and help you get up. Just sit straight up for me. Perfect. Do you feel dizzy at all? No. Always ask them about dizziness because you've been flipping and flopping them all over the place, right? Now I'm going to adjust my table. Okay, make sure it's tight. Go ahead and relax. This is called semi-fowlers because the patient's at a 45 degree angle. Why do we use semi-fowlers? Um, patients lying in a hospital bed, they are trying to watch TV. Um, really, it's used for patient comfort, patients having a little bit of trouble breathing laying flat. We sit them up, right? Or maybe they're having a lot of trouble breathing and we need to sit them all the way up. Then we're gonna put them in something called a Fowler's, High Fowler's, or Full Fowler's. All three of those things mean the exact same thing. Same thing, I'm gonna lift her up. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my table, make sure it's locked, and now she can relax. All right? That's Fowler's, Full Fowler's, or High Fowler's. Again, it all means the same thing. All right, three more things we need to talk about. I'm gonna go ahead and get Julissa to the sitting position. Sit up for me, please. All right. I'm gonna lift her legs. Relax. All right, she's back in the sitting position. Maybe we need to check for scoliosis, or maybe we need to check her balance or her coordination. And to do that, we're gonna put her in the standing position. You know you always take your drape, because it's a tripping hazard. We're gonna help my patient down. Lovely. And as soon as her feet touch that floor, my foot rest goes in, because as you know, that is a tripping hazard, okay? Standing is just like that. She's beautiful, she's standing. We do this for balance, we do this for coordination. If you've ever had that scoliosis test where you have to bend over and the, somebody rubs their fingers up and down your back, right? Um, this is the only position that you do not have to use a drape for, obviously. What am I gonna drape? She's standing up, right? Jalissa, you are done. Thank you so much. Okay, I've got two more things I have to tell you though. Thank you so much. Um, number one, there's a position called Trendelenburg and you're gonna have to look in your notes for it. <clears throat> Trendelenburg is when we actually put the patient upside down because their blood pressure has dropped. Now we don't use it very often anymore because what it does is it puts all the blood to the patient's head and that can be dangerous. But I want you to look at your notes. Again, it looks like this. The patient's head is down here. The patient's legs are up here. It's called Trendelenburg. Our hospital beds do it. Our medical office beds do not do it. So we would not be able to do it there. And then there's one more position, again, you need to check your notes for. It's called the jackknife or the proctologic position. And that's a surgical position. It's a special operating room bed where the bed looks like this and the patient is like this, okay? So they're in like an upside down V and it's for rectal um, surgeries. Or you can do it where the patient is just standing next to the bed and then they're leaning over the table and that's used for like rectal exams as well. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. I hope this helps, thanks.